What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to ship a bike and how you prep it and everything. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is obviously go to your bike shop and pick you up a big bike box. They should have a lot of them in stock um, and usually they throw them away. Some shops will actually charge you like five bucks for them. Now if you can get the one that has a bunch of packaging in it, uh, this one doesn't really have much but it has some in there that I can use because uh, you will use that packaging uh, to actually put it on the bike to protect it. So, all right, so let's go through the steps here. All right, one of the first things you're gonna do is you're gonna shift this into your largest cog up here. And the reason why you wanna do that is so that your, uh, your rear derailleur right here is as far in as possible. So that way, when it's inside the box right here, uh, your rear derailleur won't be hitting the box. So it kind of clears it out of the way there. And the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take off your front wheel. You can just sit your front wheel off to the side for now. Now, if you are using hydraulic disc brakes, uh, you're going to want to put something in the pads here to keep them from compressing. So if you accidentally you know, push on your lever up here, then the pads won't be pushed together. Um, so you're going to want to put something in there. Now, you have little blocks like this that you can use, uh, and all that does is slide up into here and essentially it will snap into place. Now, if you don't have these, which is understandable if you don't have one of these, you can just take a piece of, of cardboard, cut a square out of card. Now, if you have rim brakes, you don't have to worry about any of this. Just gonna show you real quick. So uh, when the bike go, goes into the box, it's gonna slide down into the box and your uh, front wheel is actually gonna go inside of the box and it's gonna be located right about here. So what you're gonna try to do is protect your frame where this is actually hitting okay so where the tire is hitting uh, you want your axle right here to basically be in the open spot in the front triangle so that way this is not digging into your frame here here or hitting anywhere on your frame something else that we'll do is we'll actually take off the handlebars because obviously these are too wide so when you take your handlebars off here you're going to take them and you're going to either spin them this way and try to fit them into the box this way or if the cables are long enough you can sit them on top of your top tube so the first thing we're going to do now is just put as much padding on here as possible to protect the frame now when you get your box from the bike shop, hopefully it has a lot of foam padding like this. This is what they use on the stock bikes and everything uh, because it can go around all the tubing and really protect the tubing. Obviously it's gonna be longer than this. This is the only piece I have from my box. So I'm gonna have to do some sort of, uh, you know, uh, kind of rigging some other uh, padding up that I have here. But this is by far the best padding to use. So we just added a piece of foam over the crank arm here. So it protects this crank arm when the wheel's in here. Like I said, I don't have this foam padding here, but I do have some padding and this is right here this is actually a wheel set one inside here but you can take this and you can wrap it around your tubing and basically make like a you know foam pad like before so if you got some of this laying around you can use this I've even used Walmart bags before or just plastic grocery bags or anything like that to try to wrap as much as we can as possible just pull it tight and then you're gonna take some packaging tape and tape it right there all right, so you can see now we have the down tube uh, taped on there, also the top tube taped on there, and I took that same piece and just cut it in half because it was so thick. So now we're going to add here to the seat tube. All right, we're also going to go to the seat stay and also the chain stay to protect that, and then we're also going to go to the fork and the head tube as well. And we're really focused on the non-drive side first. We want this side to be the best because, once again, that wheel is going to be right there. All right, so we got most of the uh, packaging on here. You can see the padding. I'm going to add a little bit more here in a minute, but this is the non-drive side. Pretty secure now from that the left side wheel. Just as a heads up, be sure when you tape it, try to make your tape always stay on the packaging. Uh, if your tape goes over and it gets onto the frame, you know, whenever you're, you're trying to, to get it on there and you get the tape on there, what's going to happen is whoever gets the bike, there's going to be some tape residue on here, which is just annoying more than anything. So be considerate of whoever you're shipping to. Try to keep your tape on the actual packaging. All right, so this is the front axle, and uh, sometimes when, when bike companies ship bikes, they'll have something in here to support this. You can see, as I push on it right here, you can see it kind of going in. So this pinches together. Let's say something landed on the box and actually hit it. Uh, then if it landed on the box, it could damage your fork. So you want to have some kind of support inside of here to keep that from, from collapsing down. I have shipped things without that, and it's been fine, but you know, just in case. If you have a piece of PVC pipe you could put in there. Also, if you got the box from before um, that you're going to ship, it may have this piece already, so it just depends. All right, so what I found that can actually support uh, the lower legs here is just get you a, uh, a piece of cardboard like this, 
measure out to where it's about the same width there and then you can just take it and basically wrap it around this and then that way uh, that will have some sort of support for those those fork legs um, and that way you know you may you, you hopefully won't damage the fork so uh, we're just going to wrap that around there like so and then we'll put some tape right here and that should help support those those legs just to keep it from collapsing on itself all right so we really focus once again on this non-drive side make sure it's protected we pretty much have it all set up now now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take off the handlebars and rotate them in some way to see how they fit in the box so we're actually going to pull the box over now see if we can get it in there seat posts we will pull out when we put it in the box that's usually one of the last things you can put into the box so as you can see here i took the handlebars off and this is the normal way it goes and what i like to do here is i actually like to loosen up the bolts here keep my fork facing forward spin the stem backwards now be careful if your stem is super short here if you do this it's going to hit your top tube so you don't want it hitting your top tube uh, i have in the past if if this wasn't long enough we'll take the stem put it on flip it and then put it on so the stem sits up like this and uh, what i'll do is sometimes i'll i'll zip tie this to the top tube so that way it just stays in the position right there but usually i like to do this to get it out of the way so that way you can take your bars like this and then you can sit them like this or uh, try several other positions as well. It just depends on the box and how big the box is and uh, You know, and like I said, we'll have to put some protection on these these levers as well. So now I got the stem facing backwards uh, I'm just going to tighten this down a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, but just make it snug So that way it stays there now these handlebars are, are pretty wide because they're uh, the salsa cow chippers I believe um, so you see how wide they are uh, and since you have the padding on the bars already, kind of use that for padding, obviously, whenever you uh, you ship the bike. So what I'll probably do with this is, is just move it down right in that area there. Uh, and then I'll probably zip tie it with a zip tie right around there to the fork. Another option with the bars, and I may do this with this one, is I may go this way on the top tube. Uh, if it has enough space up here in the box once again so uh, a lot of times I won't put this in until the very end I'll drop it into the box and kind of see where best it fits and then I may take the bike back out and then mount it on here or sometimes if it's up here I can actually put it up here without having to worry about that um, also too if your fork is sticking out too far this way in the box uh, you can also spin the fork around like so and that way the fork is not taking up as much room in the box so if you wanted your box to be a little shorter there all right so let's take the bike now drop it into the box let's see uh kind of what kind of room we have here um with the with the bars and and where we may need to put it so slide it down so this as you see here the front fork looks like it's going to be uh, not it's gonna be a little too long for this box also too if you have to you can let some air out of this tire here uh, to kind of shrink it a little bit I like I said before I like to leave a little bit of air usually in my tires just because it will give you some protection um, so but this one it, it did have a lot of air in it so I'm gonna drop a little bit of air so we can give ourselves a little more wiggle room inside the box all right and as far as this fork it's sticking out pretty far forward so we're going to try to reverse it and then it will go in perfectly like that and then we'll slide it down all right so we're down there and this is where you can kind of play with the bars i want to move the camera so we can see a little bit better okay so now you can see down in the box and you get an idea of how everything looks i'm probably going to take this stem once again and uh, spin it around since i had to spin the fork around um, so i'm going to take this and it looks like there's not going to be enough room in front of the bars or in front of the bike to, to put it in there. So I'm going to try to uh, fit it on the top tube here. So I've got to lift it up just a little bit, move it right there, and then we're going to try to lower it down. I'm going to go ahead and move this stem, loosen it up, spin it backwards because right now it's, uh, it's touching the, the shifter here. All right, we'll spin that fork backwards, I mean the stem backwards like that, give us a little more room. Tighten that down there. Tighten that down there. All right, now we have a little more wiggle room. So you can see here, this cable here is kind of tight. See it's pulling right here. So a few other options, you can lift it up. So that way it goes on the other side of the stem there. 
And like I said before, you can actually just take the stem off if it's causing you issues and it's in the way. So we may have to wind up doing that to, to get this bar on there. Oh, okay, we got it around. All right, well, drop my tool in there. We don't want to ship that off. All right, there we go. So, all right, so now you can see we have the bar in there. All right, and we have padding all around here, so it's going to protect that. Looks like it's this is not going to be hit by anything, so that's good. Uh, like I said before, I'll probably take a zip tie, zip tie, tie it right there just so it's not real loose and that it's solid, it won't shake around. Let's look at what we have here so far. Uh, I've tightened these down. I've put the zip ties on the handlebars here uh, to the top tube, so that's good and, and secure. Uh, once again, I'm going to add some padding onto the shifters here so that way they're not rubbed by the box or anything. And really what you're doing is you're trying to keep the box, you can see over here, we have it where there's uh, no paint exposed to the side of the box. Um, so you're, you're not wanting this to rub and rub the paint off of uh, off your bike. So, so we got all that covered, um, all that covers is covered down in there. So now what we have to do, this is the tricky part, is we have to take our front wheel over there and we're gonna have to drop it down right in here. Okay, try to get you a good angle here. Um, when you do put this in, you're gonna want your rotor to be facing outside the box, okay? Um, also, what I do, I'll add some extra uh, padding here, uh, just basically some cardboard, uh, because if you don't, this will push through the side of the box. Um, so you want some padding there. Also, I will sometimes throw uh, another cardboard box on, on this side here uh, to keep that from hitting anything on the, uh, the side of the bike. So. All right, let's see if we can drop it in here. Now, like I said, these tires are aired up completely, so um, I may have to actually uh, take some air out of them, uh, and I may have to actually take that bar off the uh, top tube to get it fit, so we'll see. All right, so like I said, you can pry the box apart to get it to go down in there. All right, this is definitely taking up a lot more space than if you're shipping like a, um, a road wheel or something like that, so. All right, so there it is right here. All right, let me let me show you uh, one little area of concern I have. So this is the front of the bike, obviously the front wheel here. I'll come in this way. You can see the axle right here. This is the, the down tube. Um, I got a finger width gap right there, which is pretty good. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and then when I push the bike together, um, that's not even getting close to this. But just to play it safe, because you don't want that axle digging into your down tube. What I'll do is I'll take uh, like a you know a box here um, and I'll flatten it and then I'll take it and actually put it in between there. So it just helps protect everything. All right, so I got my, my box here and I'll basically just try to fish it in between that down tube and that axle if I can. All right, so now I got it in between there. You can see that the priority mailbox is in between that axle and the down tube, so it's protected now. So we'll take the saddle off. Uh, I'll tighten that back down, and I'll just leave it on the tube there, and then take your seat post, take it out, we're gonna wrap it up, and then sit it in the back back there. Okay, so once again, looking at this uh, front axle of the, the front wheel, you can see right there, if I don't put anything there, that's just gonna wear right through the side of that wall um, of the box, and you don't want that. Uh, so usually what I do, I take another uh, little flat rate box and I crush it and then what I'll do is I will slide this down into there to just add uh, a little bit thicker layer of your uh, some more cardboard there. If you do have the packaging from uh, your bike shop they will have little end caps that you can actually put on the axle there uh, and it won't wear through the side of the wall but if you don't if you're in a bind you only have some cardboard just just do that it works perfect and just wrapped it with some some uh, you know plastic bags there. Uh, then right here is this is the part you really want to just make sure this is uh, padded because if it's going to rattle around you don't want that damaging anything. So uh, if we're going to put something a little bit thicker on the bottom of this like so and then just tape it on there obviously. All right so there we are that's just padded right there and all we're going to do with this is go in the back of the box back here and just find a, a good place to, to kind of sit it in there. Um, so that way it doesn't uh, cause any damage or anything. And um, as far as this goes, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of 
wedge it in like that. You see it's down there in the spokes right now, but as long as it doesn't cause, doesn't cause any issues, that's fine. I'll also probably, um, I may what I may do is actually zip tie that to one of the spokes down here, just so it's not rattling around. So, and it, all right, so I have that saddle zip tied back there on the spokes, so it's not moving, it's not going anywhere. It just moves around a little bit. But it's not gonna cause any damage or anything there. And so now what we're gonna do is close the box up. So uh, as you see here, I haven't done the GRX shifters yet. So I did have some paper right here left over. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to make a gap here in between the stem and that shifter. And then also I'm gonna to try to wrap around the bottom of the shifter there. Uh, and this shouldn't go anywhere after I wedge it in there. So uh, if you want to, you can add more if you want to in that location. And then I'll do the same with this shifter here. Um, now we're just going to make sure that all the flaps close. Uh, everything looks good here. Now what I may do is I may actually add some more padding if I have some more uh, stuff sitting around. Essentially what you don't want is you don't want your bike moving back and forth a whole lot. Uh, you want it to be solid in there so nothing is just rattling. Uh, and what I may do with this, I'm just going to take this and just slide it down in there on this side here. So that means that the rear of the, the bike is very solid. Uh, it shouldn't go anywhere. If you have some old newspapers, anything to shove in there to keep it from actually shaking and rattling. Okay, so this looks good. Looks like we're ready to uh, box it up. A lot of people want to take it and just tape it this way. Uh, I used to work at UPS and whenever people would tape their boxes this way, uh, it would actually, it would always come loose. I do initially tape mine this way just to get some tension on it, but the best taping is going to be along the whole seam of this over here. So then you just go along here, go along that seam, all the way down. All right, and there we go. And then we got our box ready to ship. Now, a few services I've used is shipbikes.com and also bike flights. So both of those are two options you can use. When you measure, you know, obviously you're going to have your length, your width, and everything like that. You take your measuring tape, go to the end, measure along. Now, this one here is actually, let's see, I thought it was 55, but it's actually 56. Um, so when you measure it, and let's say it's, it's a little bit above 56, you're going to want to jump uh, round it up to 57. Otherwise, they're going to add even more charges and get you on your credit card for that. So, all right, so I have my bathroom scale here. So what I'll do is I'll just hop on it myself. It's about 181.6. And I'll grab the box, step on it again, 216.6. So, you know, we're looking basically at 35 pounds there. And then you take those dimensions with your weight, uh, your length, your width, all that stuff, and then uh, plug it into shipbikes.com. You can print off your label. You'll take your label, you know, obviously just tape it onto your box somewhere. And then if it's FedEx, you can take it to like uh, any kind of FedEx drop off, the drop off location uh, or a UPS location if it's UPS, obviously. So I hope you found this video interesting and somewhat beneficial. And uh, if you could smash that like button, also share it with any of your friends and uh, we'll see you in the next video.